there's a damp proof course and below the damp proof course there's a lot of salty deposits on the uh, stonework which uh, I think is that evidence that the damp proof course is working so moisture is being trapped below the damp proof course and having to evaporate out below the damp proof course and leaving all that salty muck behind as it goes but up above the damp proof course none of the efflorescence so uh, this is the outside of the building quite clearly but evidently damp proof course is doing something properly I'm in a 1970s house, probably, judging from those around me. Um, and there is a soffit, um, and uh, it looks a little bit flaky. Now, is that? I mean, obviously, the white stuff's paint, but the grey stuff looks like it's uh, the surface of the soffit, which might be asbestos. Um, if you tap it, Sometimes asbestos has a nice convincing pingy sound. Does that sound pingy? Um, but what I might be doing is showering myself with asbestos fibres. Over there it does look a bit broken. So uh, probably asbestos, probably releasing fibres, probably should get it replaced. Uh, referring back to those uh, very probably asbestos cement soffits, the two houses to the right of it, I don't know whether you can see that here, have had theirs clad with uh, plastic. Um, well, the one on the right appears to be clad, and the other one perhaps too. But if that, uh, I'm thinking aloud now, I'm just thinking aloud, if that asbestos really is becoming flaky and loose, then presumably when it is eventually necessary to replace that plastic cladding, for whatever reason, the person who pulls it off is going to be showered with asbestos dust, which is not a good thing. So I think perhaps we ought to be being very specific about telling people to have the asbestos removed and not just have cladding applied over the top of it. We are in a Middle Terrace 1970s house and the underlay is falling away and uh, the edges of the underlay are very ragged indeed so this tells us i suppose that all those 1970s houses which have underlay that is in apparently good condition may not be going to last it may not be going to last much longer um yeah uh, very ragged indeed and i suppose once it's in that state is it possible that the wind ripping under the tiles is going to start tearing it apart as well i don't know but certainly this is worse than most isn't it worse than most here's something you might find interesting we've got four houses here one two three and four the two on the end that one and that one have chimneys with aerials attached and beneath those aerials there is a triangular splurge of moss whereas the two without aerials don't have this moss and uh, another surveyor explained to me that this is because birds like to sit on the aerials and poo on the roofs and this creates some kind of fertiliser that the um, moss likes to grow on. There you go. This is a, a bungalow in... Did you need me to tell you that it's a bungalow? It's a bungalow in Timsbury, so we're just outside Bath. And it's a February morning, beautiful blue skies. Uh, and it's about two degrees, a bit of frost on the roof. But uh, the building has a single story, a single story, what am I talking about? It's got a front projection and there are valleys formed where this meets the main roof. And if we go and have a look, what is fairly obvious straight away, it 
is that they're absolutely chock-a-block with leaves, twigs and moss. Um, the valleys are lead-lined. The one on the other side is a bit more visible, but there. Well, you can see there's a bit of lead between the uh, leaves. Or was it lead or was it a concrete valley? Has it been replaced already? This should be significant later on. This is the underside of one of those two valleys and we can see that the valley has been relined from the inside with a grey plastic underlay, typical of the 1980s, 1990s. Um, and if we go to the other side... Oh, there's the other valley and that has been also reformed, relined, but using a modern air permeable underlay, which is, I suppose, typically post 2000, which rather suggests that either one valley failed before the other, or that um, one of them's failed twice. Uh, but let's go and see what the situation is downstairs. This is the underside of the right side valley, and I can't remember now whether that's the one lined with Tyvek or the grey plastic. Um, but there's damp staining to the ceiling. Uh, and I think it was Randy Newman said, short people got no reason to live. And uh, what he was thinking of when he sang that is that short people actually need a ladder if they want to stick a damp beater in a damp patch on the ceiling. But uh, obviously, being a short person is not the end of the world, is it really? There's a damp patch. Ooh, not so damp. Is it damp or is it the old hygroscopic salt argument? Let's have another go here, shall we? I mean, it's not very damp, is it? Well, let's go and have a look at the other side. There's the underside of the other valley, and once again, it's all a bit grey, brown, and messy. Uh, but is it? Let me just swap hands, excuse me, boys and girls, while I fumble around. There we go. What's going to happen this time? Well, nothing. I mean, that seems to be... x damp, isn't it? Yep. So I reckon those two valley problems have been more or less probably sorted out. Let's hope so. See that chimney in the distance? There's a pair of jackdaws on the top. The significance of which is that uh, jackdaws love to nest inside chimney pots. And that's why, here comes another one, and another one. This is why you need to have your chimneys uh, flues swept be stuffed full of twigs and the desiccated corpses of dead baby jackdaws from generations past. Right, here we are. This is a 1960s bungalow and it's a very cold morning, which might be significant later. Uh, well, that's shrinkage cracking, isn't it? Thermal to uh, render over aggregate block work. And the lintel over the top, there is a tiny bit of cracking to the render to the right hand side of it, quite a long way from the lintel. And there's the brick front to whatever lintel's in there. And Quite a lot of cracking 
well, a lot of cracking, some cracking above the lintel, which was probably caused when they knocked out the old timber window and put in that plastic one. Was the timber window actually the lintel? Well, there's the chimney, and if we can get in a bit closer, I'm not quite sure what we can see from that, but uh, there's a lot of very wide open mortar joints and I really couldn't be bothered to go around the other side because it's freezing but there are some vertical fractures to the chimney too. Let's close that back down again and here we have what looks to be some kind of little collapse in the roof. A bit odd isn't it? So that's something to look at when we go indoors. possibly even another one over there. Let's go and move the ladders along and have a look. And here is, well I can't find it now, the other little uneven part of the roof. Well from this angle it doesn't really look at all uneven. So possibly my imagination, but we'll have a look indoors later. And down here we have an icicle. What fun. And here we are in the roof, and uh, I'll try not to lean on that bubble wrap, making a noise. There's lots of things jingling and jangling around by my feet. Right, well the underlay is disintegrating. That raft is a bit warped, not quite sure that really matters. Um, but I think, if I can get any closer, there are a few rotten battens, and I think that's probably why the tiles have uh, come loose. So let's go and clamber over this pile of rubble. So here we are, different part of same roof, and uh, I think although the light's a bit contrasty, but what you might just be able to work out there is there's no batten under those tiles, and that batten there, going out a little bit closer, getting in the way of our own light. Come on light. That batten's completely rotten and the ones below look a bit worse for wear too. So I think we probably need to suggest, I don't want to fall down there, that would hurt. Um, re-roofing, I guess. What else can you do? The battens are knackered. It's all going to fall apart in due course. Yes. Doesn't look so bad, that side. Right. Uh, 50 minutes CPD. This is a little 1960s bungalow. Nothing very exciting. Um, blown render. That is the interesting bit. Here's a shower room, wet room, there you go. Getting in a bit closer, we've got uh, broken tiles. And uh, down there, that's all rather badly cracked. And heaven knows where the water's going, but we've got uh, lots of loose tiles down there as well. And up there as well, there you go. Lots of places water can get behind the tiles. So does it make any difference? Does it matter? Let's actually go for a little walk outside the house. And here is the same wall from the other side and uh, it's got efflorescence. So here's my Suggestion is that the wall is saturated and as this water is evaporating back out of the wall It's leaving all that gunk behind. So presumably the cavity fill, which I believe there is in this house And there's your evidence of cavity fill, a little pointed in Drill hole on the wall it is presumably sopping wet. So uh, There's a concrete lintel over the top. I've got nothing to do with anything, probably. 
Well, it's the end of the uh, end of the 15 minute CPD presentation.